Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and back to another video. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different than the regular gameplay video. And the biggest reason is, you know, I figured with me being a PC gamer, there's a lot of questions that I had when I first started building my PC almost three years ago now. And the biggest question was, what are the parts that I should get and why? Uh, luckily, my cousin, uh, he's my cousin. He lives in California now. He was living in Wisconsin with us at, at the time, but he is back in California. He was the one that helped me kind of pick out some of these parts and give me some of that reasoning. So I kind of want to do that with you guys today. Um, now, this is going to be the first video of a two part video. Uh, kind of series it's not really a series when it's just two part but uh first of two parts video where we're going to be essentially building two different pcs very very similar but just slight differences in them um and this one i am calling team red amd pc um the other one that we'll touch base on in part two is team blue the intel um and the biggest reason i'm going team red team blue is that's always the biggest question people ask when they're building a PC, when they're putting one together, what are you going with? Are you going team red? Or are you going team blue? And they are always referring to the CPU, the central processing unit, essentially the heart of the computer. That is the thing that you want um, to power a computer. The other thing arguably is the graphics card that we'll get to later. Um, but that is what they are always referring to. What type of brand are you going for with the CPU? And as a quick disclaimer here, guys, this is just my opinion. This isn't sponsored in any way. Obviously, this channel is way too small to be sponsored. Um, this is opinionated in um, every single piece that I choose. I do have an AMD build right now. Now, this isn't the exact build, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. But this is basically what I think is going to be the best bang for your buck if you're just starting off with PC building and PC gaming in general. If you're not someone that wants to start streaming or if you do want to start streaming, but just not right now um, and you're not doing any recordings, you know, you still want to talk with your friends on Discord or whatever you use to talk with friends, occasionally surf the web, watch YouTube, you know, edit a video here and there. This PC is going to be able to do that stuff without breaking the bank. That is the most important thing with a first PC. You do not want to break the bank. You don't want to go overboard on something that you're not going to use because you don't know how to use it yet. You can always upgrade down the line. And before we move on, guys, if you do like this content, if you think this is a cool idea that we should kind of keep exploring down the line as new products come out, definitely drop a like, leave a comment down below on what team you are, if you're team red or team blue. Um, and if not, here we go. We're going to walk into it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay. So here is a quick list of what I'm doing. We'll go in somewhat detail on every part. Now, this isn't a PC enthusiast YouTube channel like uh, Linus Tech Tips or uh, Jay's Two Cents, Gamers Nexus, anything like that. This is, again, just an opinionated video, two part video talking about what PC parts I think you should have in a beginner's PC for gaming. Um, we are going to be using PC Part Picker. The nice thing that I like about PC Part Picker is these two things right here, estimated wattage and compatibility. It's essentially going to tell you for the part that you pick, this is what's going to be compatible. That was another struggle that I had with PC building when I was building my first PC. I've built about four now for myself. And the biggest question I had for my cousin back then was, how do I know what parts to buy and why? Why can I not buy this Intel board with an AMD CPU? Obviously, for some people, that's like, well, because it's AMD and Intel, it's not going to work together. But why doesn't it work together? There's, you know, for a first time builder, it's not clear as to why. PC Part Picker takes all that away. It makes it simple for you, and it only gives you results that are compatible with your current components in the build. That's why they always like to start with CPU first, because that's going to be the basis for your build. You need to make sure that your motherboard is compatible. You need to make sure your memory, your storages, everything else is compatible with that CPU one way or another. And you can always check this compa compatibility bar. Estimated wattage we'll get to in a little bit regarding the power supply. But first things first, the CPU. So as you can tell, 
I picked the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. Now, if we go into the CPU list, again, I'm gonna filter with by AMD because we're going team red on this first video. You're gonna see a slew of different options for yourself um, down to 5600, 58, 59, yada, yada, yada. Um, X, G, X, 3D, what does this all mean? No letter here, what does that mean? Essentially, what you wanna look at is what Ryzen number and then followed by the thousands. What are you looking at? You have a Ryzen 5, a Ryzen 7, and a Ryzen 9. Before they used to make Ryzen 3s, but not really anymore. That essentially is your tier of CPU, Ryzen 5 being the lowest, Ryzen 9 being the highest. Um, the higher you go, the better performance, the better uh, core counts, you see six, eight, 12, we'll get to what that means in a little bit. But the most important part is the higher price. Now in this build and in the Intel build, we're gonna try to see if we can stay within the thousand dollar mark for sure not going above 1,500. As a first time build, I do not think you should go anywhere near or above $1,500. If you do, you're kind of blowing, uh, breaking the bank in terms of PC and you're probably not gonna be able to use all that power or know how to use it if you wanted to. So in this one, I chose the Ryzen 5 5600X, not because it's the cheapest, but because honestly, I believe it is the best bang for your buck. Personally, I use the Ryzen 7 5800X. Again, that's because I stream while I game and I also record YouTube and content while I am gaming. That's putting a bigger strain on my computer. I want the horsepower and the computing power, I should say, to match my demand. Um, but for most of you, if you are just starting off with gaming, you're really not gonna be doing streaming or um, recording at the same time. Or if you are, it's gonna be very light load recording and streaming. Um, and the Ryzen 5 5600X can definitely do that like it's nothing. Um, now with that 5600X, again, best bang for your buck, it does just about everything that you need. Yeah, it might be a little slow, you know, in like three to four down, four years down the line, but you can always upgrade again later on. So that is why I chose the Ryzen 5 5600X. So the next thing that you do need is your motherboard. Like I was saying before, why do I, why can't I buy an Intel board for an AMD CPU? Well, because it's not compatible. It is physically not going to fit into that motherboard. So if we take a look at this motherboard, all of these results are for the AMD and I can tell by the socket type, all Ryzen 5000 series are what they call an AM4 socket, essentially the little keyed area that the CPU kind of sits into. Important things that you want to look at for a motherboard is the form factor. So you have ATX, micro ATX, and it's not on this list, but there is also a mini ITX. That is the smallest form factor that a motherboard can be, ATX being the standard form. Um, and then my, micro ATX being somewhere in the middle. There is also E-ATX, extended ATX, but most people don't get that unless they're buying insane, insanely huge cases, um, which I hope you're not buying for your first PC because that would weigh a lot. But in terms of motherboards, what is the one thing that you, what are a few things that you wanna look at aside from form factor and socket type? You wanna look at your connectivity. So what are you gonna to wanna to be using your computer for? Obviously you're gonna need some USB ports. You need to plug in your mouse. You need to plug in your keyboard, potentially your headphone, a, an external microphone if you're using one. You need to be able to have some ports. The other thing that you wanna look at is what they call a chipset. The chipset can be defined right here by B550, X570, and then we see some little changes, B550A, uh, B550M, all that kind of stuff. B450, similar to the Ryzen, when we saw the 3000, that is last gen. So we are trying to stick to all newest gen here. Now, similar to why I said it's not necessary for you to buy a Ryzen 9, with starting off on your first build, you also don't wanna buy a X, an X570 board. Biggest reason is they're more expensive and you're not gonna be able to utilize it fully at in the beginning. 
no need to waste that money if you're if you don't know how to use it yet you can always upgrade down the line when the new products come out so in this case i'm gonna stick with a b550 we could go with this b450 because it is fairly cheap um, still more expensive this than this 89 dollar one but we'll maybe explain why we don't want that in a little bit but again we want to stick with the up-to-date stuff so the reason why you don't want to go with this Gigabyte B550, same reason why you don't want to go with, say, like a, a cheap Android phone. Yeah, it's cheaper. Sure, people might use it, but the quality is just not there. The price reflects the quality. You get what you pay for here. I'm picking the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi to a whole bunch of marketing important thing is asus that's the company that's making the board b550 that's your chipset and the important part that i want to point out is wi-fi don't worry about the two the wi-fi aspect if you look at this board msi mag b550 does not have wi-fi what that means is if we take a look at this board if we take a look back here i have nowhere to put wi-fi antennas i have to run this ethernet cable for some people that's not practical Maybe your Wi-Fi connection, your access point is in the kitchen, but you're gaming downstairs in the basement. You're not running a hundred yard Ethernet cable across the entire house just to plug in your computer. It's just not practical. So to get away from that, you have the Wi-Fi built in motherboard. You can always buy Wi-Fi cards, but again, that's extra cost. If we look at this MSI B550, it's $169, $170. This is actually cheaper and you get Wi-Fi. You're gonna get the majority of the same connectivity. If we take a look here, you still get a really good amount of USBs, even a USB-C. You still get your ethernet if you wanna do a hard cable, but you get your little Wi-Fi points that they're gonna give you an antenna. If we look right here, here it is. It's a little shark fin. You just screw in those little points of those golden tips and now you have Wi-Fi connectivity. That's a great thing with this board, and that's why I picked it. It's a middle of the pack price. It's a great chipset, and it gives you all the connectivity that you're going to need starting off. Next thing you're going to want is RAM or memory, as some people call it. I went with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 16 gigabytes. You can get more capacity. You can get less. You can get RGB, or you can get no RGB. We'll kind of jump into this and um see why I pick this kit. Now, when you're looking at RAM, biggest things you wanna look at is the capacity, 16 gigabytes in this case. Most sticks of RAM come in pairs when you purchase them. It's always gonna be a two by blank configuration. So if you look at 16, it's a two by eight, 32, two by 16, so on and so forth, up to 128 where it's a two by 64 um, pairing. The other thing you want to look at is DDR4 or 5 because DDR5 is now accessible. It is very expensive at this point, but it's essentially the type of RAM. DDR4 is now considered the older RAM, but again, DDR5 is so new in the market that yes, most builds nowadays can have them um, with a few exceptions and a few asterisks here and there. Obviously, it but they are gonna be much more expensive. And just right now for starting off, just go with DDR4. You're gonna save a buck and it's still gonna perform well enough for what you wanna do with it. And the other thing you wanna look at is the speed. So we see here 3600 and 3200, that is in megahertz. Um, you don't need to know what that means if you don't want to, but it's essentially how fast is your RAM able to pull the data so that it can communicate with the CPU and you know, just how how fast can the computing power go? So 3600 is obviously faster than 3200. Now I will say when it comes to AMD builds, Team Red, their CPUs tend to be hungrier in terms of speeds for the RAM. So if you can, ex if you can afford the 3600 speed, I would definitely recommend it. But if you can't and you just want to go with the 3200 speed, that is perfectly okay. I will say for my build, I am running 3200 megahertz. I'm actually running four sticks of this exact uh, RAM. So I have four of these. So I bought two pairs, but they're running in 3200 speeds. I have no issue with them. I have never had any issue with them. Sure, I might be leaving some performance on the table, but my computer performs well enough that I don't really care. So 
if you can afford the 3600 go for it if you if you can't don't feel like you're settling at 3200 you're still getting a lot of performance so if you want to get the rgb again i would recommend the corsair vengeance rgb pro that's what i have but you could also go with something like a g skill trident z um 16 gigabyte 3600 79 dollars compared to 73.98 it's a few bucks here or there depending on what brand you want to go you might be tempted to go with other brands like silicone power where it's 16 gigabytes at 3200 for only 45 bucks you guys but i would steer clear of silicone power i bought this exact stick a kit of ram sticks when i first started building my pc and i ran into so many issues guys I was so new with PC building and troubleshooting, it was annoying trying to figure out and watching YouTube after YouTube video to see how to fix these RAM sticks. And I, at the end of the day, I, I never knew how. I just kind of gave up. Um, so I try to steer clear from this stuff if you can. Don't go with the cheapest option because it's the cheapest option. Try to go with a company that's well established like Corsair, G Skill. Kingston, even Team Group, they're pretty good nowadays. Uh, you know, maybe like five years ago, I would have been. They're kind of like a silicone power. Stay away from them, but they're pretty darn good now. Team Group is pretty good. So if you can find them, um, looking at this stick, 16 gigs, 3200 for 49 bucks. That's not bad. There's no RGB there, so if you are okay with no RGB, go for it. Um, but just take a look here. You know, uh, 3600 speeds at 16 gigabytes. You get some RGB. Okay, let's say let's knock off that RGB. I don't want it um, because the majority of our build today doesn't really have RGB in it. So I want to look for something that has 16 gigabytes at 3600 speed. So let's just kind of scroll down here. Here's another Corsair product, Corsair Vengeance LPX compared to RGB, 16 gigs, 3,600. It's at $64, a whole $10 cheaper. $10 is $10, you guys. And the biggest difference between this other than no RGB is the profile. It is a lot smaller profile, meaning it's going to fit in a lot more cases. Let's go with it. And the nice thing that, again, I like about PC Part Picker, it makes it so easy to build. Since I already have this, I can just go ahead and hit that, and it's gone. I now just have this set of RAM. Next thing that we're gonna look at is the storage. So you need storage to not only house all of your um, programs that you need, um, you know, photos, games. You wanna make sure that your storage is fast enough for the stuff that you are trying to access. So let's jump into this crucial P. What is NVMe? What does that mean? I like to call it the stick of gum. Um, this is going to attach directly to your motherboard. Again, we got that Asus Tough Gaming B550 earlier. This is gonna stick directly to the motherboard and it is the fastest storage out there right now for enthusiast gaming PCs. Um, not this generation, PCIe 3.0, that's a few generations old now, but it's still a lot faster than the hard drive and it's the cheapest right now of nvme drives looking at this 500 gigabytes for 40 bucks you guys you are not going to beat that with a company as well pronounced as crucial they've been in the game for years and years they're a very solid company and solid product i would trust them with my data every day any day 500 gigabytes you can go with a lower gigabyte drive like say 250 but rather than paying the five or the forty dollars for the five hundred gigabyte, you might be paying like thirty-two bucks for a two hundred and fifty gigabyte drive, or maybe like twenty-eight bucks. And in my opinion, you know, you're paying a little bit more, but you're getting double the amount. You you are eventually going to run out of storage with all those updates, and you know, you might be wanting to add some new uh, gaming software like OBS that I have down here, Outplay that I have down here. I always like to put those on my NVMe because those are gonna boot up the fastest. In my opinion, it makes sense to kind of cough up the little extra dollars here and there just to double your storage. And again, with a spinning hard drive, Seagate, why did I pick the Seagate Barracuda Compute 2 terabyte? Simply put, it's a good amount of capacity and it's the cheapest one I could find. 
there's no other way around it. Um, if I look at this, this is another two terabyte, but it's 220 bucks. That's because it's an NVMe, like the crucial P2 that we picked. And I don't want that much at this price point right now on my first build, just for bulk storage. I can spend that money later on in the future if I want. I also didn't go with something like a Seagate Barracuda four terabyte because, you know, in reality, if I'm running out of space on video games, I can just delete a game that I haven't played in a while and then re-download the game later on if I want to play it again. There's no biggie on that one. And with two terabytes, you can fit a lot of games on that. So that's why I went with the Crucial P2 and the Seagate Barracuda two terabyte. Now the big question that everyone has, the graphics card. What card are you using and why? What is the video quality gonna be? How many frames per second can you get on Call of Duty or Apex or Fortnite for everyone? Honestly, it comes down to how much can you afford right now in the market? Um, graphics cards are definitely going down now in price than what they were a year ago when I was upgrading my PC, but they're still a little more expensive than normal retail price. Now, when you come to a graphics card, you really only have two options right now. Um, two solid options, I should say. You have Team Red again, which is AMD. AMD does make CPUs and GPUs. And you have Team Green, which um, isn't Seagate. I know you see Team Green here, but it's not Seagate. It's uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA arguably makes the better graphics card at this price point, but the reason I ended up going with a Radeon, Radeon is AMD's graphics lineup, their graphics division. The reason I went with an AMD card with the AMD CPU is something that AMD calls smart access memory. It essentially allows the graphics card and the CPU to communicate in a way that makes your performance better. It essentially accelerates and expands the amount of memory that the graphics card can push out over to the CPU in one go. Rather than kind of limiting it to a certain amount, it can open it up to the full eight gigabytes at once if absolutely necessary. That's not something that an NVIDIA card can do with an AMD CPU. So. That's one of the reasons. Now, if we go into the video card, and again, we're gonna filter by AMD here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna filter by AMD. So anytime you see a GeForce, that's gonna be a NVIDIA. Anytime you see Radeon, that's gonna be AMD. We're not gonna look at 6800 or below because again, similar to the CPUs, that is a high enthusiast product. We're just not gonna need that right now. There's no point in spending that much because we're not gonna be able to use all of that power. This is if you're trying to game in like 4K or you're trying to blow your frame rates. In reality, you really don't need that much to have a great gaming ex experience compared to a console. On the flip side, I'm not going with something as low as a 6500 XT or if you went with Nvidia A3050 because it's just, it doesn't make sense. It is too low in the totem pole. You can definitely get more for your money if you go with something in the middle like a 66 to 6700 xt somewhere between one of these three or if you're going with nvidia something like an rtx 3060 or 3070 you can get their ti's that's essentially like a little bumped up version of these but right now i will say nvidia is more expensive than amd and the 37 essentially operates at the same level if not more as a 6700 6700 xt their xt lineup you can see it as the ti lineup so you're getting basically the same thing with the 3070 compared to a 6700 xt but we'll filter by these two for amd and you can see my top list we already went with the rx 6600 xt by msi Reason why I went with them compared to something like ASRock Challenger 6600 XT, 309 compared to 319. Why did I not go with the $10 cheaper one? I'll tell you why. To me, aesthetics are still something that I wanna consider in a build. This does not look aesthetically pleasing to me. I don't like that it's cut off here or that it doesn't extend all the way down. Now, for some of you that don't know, when you plug in your graphics card into your PC, when you slot it in, this is what you're going to be seeing. You're not going to be able to see the fans. This is facing downwards, sucking in the cold air from the outside of your PC to cool the guard. This is what is you're going to be seeing. And this to me just doesn't look pleasing. 
I would much rather go with something like the MSI where they're going to have a backplate like this. If you look at it, it goes all the way across. It extends to the full extent. To me, that just looks nicer when I am looking at my graphics card. That looks better to me than this ASRock one did. Um, so that's why I went with that MSI RX 6600. I spent the $2 extra for the more aesthetically pleasing product. If you wanna save the 10 bucks, definitely go for it. Again, that's just my opinion. Last few things and we're almost done guys uh, before we actually jump back to the cooler. We need a case and a power supply. So let's first talk about the case um, and then we'll talk about the cooler and we'll round it off with the power supply. So the, I went with the Fantex Eclipse P300 Mesh ATX mid tower case. ATX, that's gonna matter a little bit depending on the motherboard. If I say I went with a micro ATX motherboard, I could still have gone with this ATX case uh, because it's still gonna fit. Now, why did I go with the Fantex Eclipse? I've actually personally used this case um, for a few months before I switched to my current case. Now I have it in a secondary build. This is a great case for the price that you pay for. You do get, I believe it's two free fans if I recall. You get two fans with the case. The front is entirely mesh, so you get great airflow for your case, and it doesn't break the bank at $70. If I look at others like the Corsair 4000D, yeah, it's also a great case. It looks a lot nicer, but it's also $105. I can also get something like the NZXT H510 Flow, another great case. It has that mesh front. It's going to have great airflow, but it's $90. These are basically going to perform the same for most of you and it's $70, you get a mesh front and you get two free fans. Corsair and the NZXT also come with two free fans, but again, you're paying a little bit more there. So that's really my biggest reasoning why I went to, with the Fantex Eclipse. I did say we're gonna jump back to the cooler before we round out with the power supply and I'll tell you why in a little bit. It's kind of hinting at this estimated wattage, but. CPU coolers, there's two different types that you can get. You can get what they call an airflow cooler. So something that looks like this or this, or a CLC, a closed liquid cooler, something like this. Um, the biggest difference is this is only using air and the fans moving it, where this is gonna be using a little bit of liquid in these tubes that you see here. But the third option that they have, and that's for the high enthusiast builder, they call custom water loop cooling. That is way too advanced. Even I haven't done that. I'm scared to try that. The most I think I'm ever gonna do is something like a closed liquid cooler. Reason I did not go with something like this Cooler Master Master Liquid is the price. I said we're gonna try to keep it around the $1,000 mark. Yes, the CLCs are gonna keep your CPU cooler, which in turn is gonna help your PC perform better. But in reality, these airflow coolers really do work pretty well nowadays. Um, and you can't go wrong with companies like Be Quiet, Cooler Master, or Noctua. Noctua is kind of like the king in the, in the airflow market. But again, looking at this one, the NHD 15, it's $110. It is more expensive than this liquid cooler. That's why I went with the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 Black for about $45. You can't go wrong with that. And you can always upgrade to a closed liquid cooler down the line if you want to, just like anything else in this build. And the last thing is the power supply. Um, I went with the EVGA 600, PQ stands for bronze, for EVGA 600 watt. Uh, they have 600 on here twice and 80 plus bronze. We'll talk about that certified rating in a little bit. Why did I go with 600 watts? Well, again, because of my estimated wattage. It says I need at least 349 watts to power this PC day in, day out. That doesn't have to account for any additional fans that I may purchase or any additional upgrades down the line. I will say if this is 350, try to get at least 200 watts more just to kind of help future proof your build. And in case any of your components ever kind of like power surge or spike in the amount of power that they normally draw it kind of helps protect your power supply so 
yeah, while well, they make some 350 watt power supplies, that's not what I'm gonna be looking for. That's why I went with the 600 watt by EVGA. A few things to look for in a power supply is, again, the type. So you have ATX or SFX. ATX is the standard amount, the standard size. SFX is smaller, but the smaller you go, the more expensive you have to get just because that's a niche product. The other thing is, oops, the efficiency rating and the wattage um, and the modularity. We'll, we'll touch base on that a little bit. The wattage, we kind of already talked about it. How much does your, how much does your um, PC demand of you? How much wattage are you gonna? How much wattage are you gonna buy? The efficiency rating essentially means how efficient is your power supply from converting the power to the wall to usable power for your PC. 80 plus bronze is the lowest I'd absolutely go. Um, they do also have 80 plus gold, platinum. I don't know why I keep right clicking. Sorry guys. Gold, platinum. There is also a titanium down here. There is also a silver rating that's in between bronze and gold, but no one really ever uses that anymore. I stuck with an 80 plus bronze because yes, it's not as efficient as the more widespread 80 plus gold, but at the end of the day, this is your first build. There's no need to spend that much more money. It's really not that much more efficient if you're just playing video games every now and then, or even at least for like four hours every day. When it really comes into account is when you're running this PC 24 7 365 that's when you want the better efficiency rating because it's going to be lasting longer for you it's going to be more reliable and it's going to cost you less on the bill every month so again we don't necessarily need it right now that's why i went with an 80 plus bronze 600 watt because that's what we needed and modularity you can see semi full you'll also see a no modular that basically means how can you connect your cables? This one is a semi-modular, so some of the cables are hardwired to the power supply. I cannot unplug those, whereas some of them, I can plug them and unplug them as needed. A full modular power supply, every single cable that I need on there, I can plug in. I don't need to plug in a single one that I don't need. Um, that's the nice thing, but again, that's a creature comfort. You're gonna pay more for that. So that's why we went with a semi-modular one. For 70 bucks, 600 watts, that's not bad at all, you guys. And that essentially rounds out our build. Some of you guys may have already seen that price down below, but $1,000, $1,020.72 after some mail-in rebates there. So without the mail-in rebates, $1,050 for 72. That is before taxes and before shipping, but guys, we're pretty darn close to that thousand dollars. I think this is a, this is a pass. I'll, I'll say this is a pass. We got pretty darn close to that thousand dollars. It's also not including an operating system or your monitor, keyboard, headphones, uh, speakers, mice, all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, some people have a, you know, like an older favorite pair of earbuds that they like using. They can scrummage around for like a cheap keyboard and mouse just to get going and you know um, a monitor if you don't have a monitor just use your tv for now it's not going to be the greatest experience in terms of performance but hey you're just starting off right now there's no shame in starting off on a tv in terms of operating system guys i'm not going to get into that today but all i can say is never never buy a microsoft license at the full 100 plus retail price there's definitely websites out there that are legal um that can definitely get this for you a lot lower. There is no risk in it. Never pay a hundred plus for an operating system. You can just Google um, Windows 10 operating license and you'll you'll find a bunch of websites out there. But again, we're not gonna go into too much depth in that. But this rounds out the part one video, the Team Red video. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments of this build. Is this something that you have built in the past, a very similar product? Um, what team do you guys prefer? Are you Team Red or are you Team Blue? And why, why, or why not? The other thing that I wanted to mention, guys, is right now AMD and Intel are coming out with new CPUs. Uh, AMD is launching their 7000 series. Intel is launching their 13th gen. That'll make more sense in the next video. But why didn't we talk about that? Well, for the most part is that stuff isn't available yet. And the other part is it's way too expensive. This is a first time build. We do not need to be purchasing the bleeding edge of consumerism right now when you're just starting off. There's gonna be a lot of hiccups. There's gonna be a lot of bumps down the road. Let's 
purchase something that's refined and still fairly recent that's going to get you up and going as soon as you get everything built. If you guys do have any other um, comments or you think that, you know, I, I should have swap this for that or that for this uh definitely let me know down in the comments like this video subscribe to the channel and i'll catch you guys in part two deuces